The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. The birther side that has ever made contact with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office either through Arpaio's office directly or through me, who had information that we thought was relevant, every one of those persons not only supplied the information, they supplied their full identity, including social security numbers right. and contact information, right. and, and uh, gave us permission to do background checks on them. And every one of those persons filled out an affidavit and swore under perjury what they were giving us to be true. Right. That has not happened on the other side. Right. And apparently the other side thinks that we're going to take whatever they put out there and we're going to blindly follow it. Well, you know what it's like? It's kind of like getting directions and then having yourself sit in the back of a limo doing about 70 miles an hour, and the headless horseman is driving. Right. Where do you think you're going to end up? Right, right. And to me, this really goes to, to show the, the difference in character between the so-called birthers and the Obama bots. I mean, because the, the, the birthers who have been a, um, uh, 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 an, an instrumental part of helping to move this forward, as you said, they've come forward. They've given you names. They've signed affidavits. They've turned over their identifying documents. They've, some of them have come in and sat down and, and sworn out affidavits and brought information. I mean, they're up front. I mean, they, they care about our country, our Constitution. They're willing to be wrong. They, they bring you stuff, and they say, look, if I'm wrong, show me. Those are the birthers. On the Obot side, they're running around in the shadows, and they're lying and deceiving and calling you names and, and, and using uh, initials and fake names, and they won't identify themselves, and they won't sign affidavits, and they won't swear to anything, yet they get on the Internet and their little chat rooms and make these grand declarations. There's a big difference in character there, isn't there, Mike? Uh, it's a phenomenal difference, and, you know, you have to take it from the source. Yeah. And look, at any time during an investigation like this, somebody could be wrong, somebody could make a mistake, something could pop up that changes the game. Right. But I want to be clear right now, this little Xerox thing isn't what isn't doing it. Right. It's not doing it. Right. You know, I think that they threw their last card in the game. Right. By putting this thing out there. Right. But I'm going to tell you, you know, they're accusing me of, of not uh, standing up and taking responsibility for the challenge that I put out there very early on. And that challenge still stands. Right. If you think you have the formula, the recipe, if you will, for a one-button push to have a document recreate all the anomalies on Obama's birth certificate, you are more than welcome to come down to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. You can sit with me, and you can show me how it happens. Right. And I'm going to tell you right now, that little Xerox thing does not do it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, and, and, and that's the key is, and, and for the sake of, uh, most of our listeners know what we're talking about, but for those that are just joining in saying, what are they talking about, the Xerox thing? And, and the Obama bots came up with this thesis, some, some, this postulation some weeks ago that they had found a particular Xerox machine, a particular serial number that if you place a Hawaiian birth certificate in it and they never did say press the button once, but basically, and, and put out the document that it comes out exactly the same as the document that's on the White House website. And what you're saying, Mike, is that that is false. That is not true. It does not happen particularly by putting a, a birth certificate in there, pushing the button once, which is what all anybody would do, and then pull it off and put it on the website. It does not reproduce all of the anomalies, correct? That is 100% correct. Yeah. So... There, there, there you go, and that's what Mike is talking about with the with the Xerox machine caper, something that they thought. Would, and, and I agree with you, Mike. I think that was their last ace in the hole. I think that that's they threw that card in. But I'm going to take a break, Mike, and when we come back, I, I'm I'm going to make a, a a theory, a postulation as to why they threw that in. I, I've I've got a sneaking suspicion uh, why they've made such a big deal out of that. So, Mike, can you hang on and and be with us for a few more moments? Yeah, absolutely. Correct. Okay, fantastic. And and uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Mike a question that will um, uh, ho hopefully allow him to at least speak generally to uh, to where this thing is going and perhaps some more um, uh, progress that has been made. So anyway, you don't want to miss what's coming next. You're listening to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallus. Mike Zula, my guest this afternoon. We'll be right back. We're now in. 
Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, welcome back, Gulf Coast, welcome back, America. Uh, we are live this afternoon, and my guest, of course, is Mike Zulo, the lead investigator of the cold case posse, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Maricopa County, Obama fraud case. Uh, well, Mike, so um, let me just, I'm going to make a general statement. I, I, I think that the, the Xerox caper probably was their last ace in the hole. And, you know, I've got to ask myself, and you don't have to answer any of this because it might go to your investigation, but, you know, if I'm an investigator out there, I've got to ask myself, who are these guys that all of a sudden know about a Xerox machine and an exact serial number and exactly what it will do and won't do? And, and why is it five years later that they all of a sudden know that? And why is it at this point, now that we have congressmen ready to take it before Congress, that all of a sudden they have this so-called evidence and it turns out to be a caper and they're calling your phone wanting to know if they're a suspect now? And I mean, <laughs> I think this thing is really getting stirred up, Mike, but in the meantime, time to see um, I will just ask you this very generally apparently from everything else you're finding out and it's a lot the birth certificate thing which is huge is kind of the tip of the iceberg apparently this thing gets really dark and really deep and your investigation is leading to some stunning connections to people, places, events, and things across this land. Am I? Can you speak to any of that? You know, Carl, I, I really can't can't speak to it um, to, to any length. But you're not off in what you're saying. Like I said earlier, if you think that uh, Sheriff Apio just had me looking at the birth certificate on the computer screen every day, you're wrong. Right. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of stuff here, and I think um, a lot of its focus on the certificate is being done for the purpose of using this as a focal point to keep attention drawn to that certificate so everything else can just go on by. Right. And as the consummate professional investigator you are, that was one of the first red flags to you when when your face was just continually being shoved into the details of that. I suppose that's when you had an aha moment and when you started turning your head left and right, that's when other things just really, really started rolling, huh? Well, you know, you have to look at it from my perspective is if you're on the other side, and I don't care what side you are on this thing, if you're on the other side and you truly wanted to help law enforcement get to the bottom of this, right. you wouldn't do it the way these guys are doing it. Right. That's the key. You just don't. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and, and, and hear what Mike Zulo just said, folks. Now, think about this. So if you're the lead investigator and you're sitting on top of this criminal case and you've got, got people out there saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're all wrong. That's, you're wrong. We've got evidence to the contrary. Well, what would you do if your intentions were not nefarious? You would go into the sheriff's office. You would take your evidence. You would identify yourself. You would sign affidavits. And, and Mike Zulo, being the consummate professional he is, would take the evidence, would forensically examine it. And if you were right, then he would make his declarations. But that's not how they've handled it. Right, Mike? No, it's not. It's adversarial. It's disinformation. It's misinformation. It's outright condescension. Um, I mean, it's actually at, at some points even insulting and infuriating um, the way they conduct themselves. So you have to take it again from the source. And, you know, you ask yourself a question, you know, does the CIA take direction from the KGB? Right. The answer is no. Right. Uh, at least we hope not. <laughs> well, I know. But, hey, in the last couple of weeks, we might. <laughs> that might be. Yeah. In, in the real <laughs> world, in, in the America you and I grew up in, in the real world, the CIA doesn't take direction from the KGB. But in Obama's world, they might be. Hey, very well. I don't know. It's pretty, never heard the Russian president appealing to the American people directly before. Oh, my before. gosh. Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. Well, I just have a question for you, Mike, before I let you go. Am I a suspect in your case? No, Carl. You know, I really think I can uh, disqualify you with that. But I can tell you this, yeah. that after the last uh, week of events, yeah. the individual that called, yeah. if you weren't, Right now, you look like the Hindenburg on my radar screen, and we all know what happened to the Hindenburg. <laughs> yeah, we know what happened to the Hindenburg. Well, is Joey Wallace a suspect? I, I mean, I'm just I'm just crazy about this. Is, who, is Mallory Bardwell, is she a suspect? Who? <laughs> 
Sometimes I have to check and make sure I'm not a suspect. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. Well, Mike, listen, I'm going to give you a chance to reiterate this. And I know this is, I'm speaking from my heart, but uh, all we want is the truth, right? I mean, I mean, truly, if forensically, uh, you know, verifiable evidence came in tomorrow to show that this was all a bunch of junk, you'd declare that, right? I mean, that's all you want. I, Carl, I, I would do that tomorrow. Here is the problem with this thing. Like I said, it's we've got not ten just seconds, about Mike. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've got ten seconds. Go ahead. It's not just about the birth certificate. It's everything that surrounds it, yep. and that's where the real problems start. That's it. That's it. Everything that surrounds it. Mike Zulo, we'll have you back on. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks, Carl. Okay. Good deal. Well, folks, you have been listening to Freedom Friday live today with Carl Gallup's Joey uh, Wallace, your producer, Mallory Bardwell, your world famous producer. We'll be back next Friday. We'll have another great show for you. You can get all this stuff on podcast at carlgallops.com. Go to PP Simmons. We'll have a bunch of it put up there, too. See you next Friday. God bless you. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.